Hey everyone, so I wanted to just pop on here and just talk a little bit about my appointment with my neurologist. So I just had my yearly checkup like a couple hours ago. It went so well. It's really, really to the point now where it's probably the best it's ever going to be when it comes to my migraines and IIH being in remission. I often feel like I wish that everything was as easy as how the IIH has been to get rid of, especially the migraines. But that being said, I am just so thankful to be in this position. I'm literally in living a dream when it comes to this part of my life compared to where I was like only a few years ago. I never ever ever thought that I would even be able to hold down a job, let alone the thought of going back to school and all of that is a huge, huge deal. So I wanted to actually come on here and talk a, lot of, a little bit about another part of my life that I don't really spend a lot of time talking about because it's been so long, but I've got something on my mind that I wanted to talk a little bit about because it's been a bit of an issue lately. And that is how isolating being gluten-free is and the fact that it's not just as simple as swapping out a piece of bread that's labeled gluten-free on to be able to be accommodated and how big cross-contamination is in factoring in what you can enjoy and how it affects your social situations because everything seems to involve either food or drinks that contain some type of gluten. I've actually wanted to maybe think about doing a video where maybe I cook a meal and just talk about every little place that can have cross-contamination in it and some of the things that people don't think about. I love the people who honestly try to like include you. I have a lot of experience with, you know, just being completely left out and it's hard on your mental health. You do get used to it after a little bit. And honestly, depending on how much or how little cross-contamination you can get before you actually start to experience a problem, it can be a better thing to just completely outright refuse to have anything when you're not sure of where everything's been than to risk it and possibly have cross-contamination because people don't know what they're doing. I've thought about that though because it's the little things that people don't think about where you're like and they think you're being ridiculous but it's a big source of cross-contamination. It's not just as simple as finding the ingredients because honestly like I find Finding the ingredients or something that is gluten-free is actually pretty easy these days. It's gotten a lot easier than it was when at least I went was originally gluten-free. But the prep on making something can involve a lot of places of cross-contamination that people don't think about. Just it's a part of my life that people really don't think about. And I don't, unless somebody is trying to offer me food that I can't have, I don't mention that I'm gluten-free. And it's not like there's a giant sign on me that says gluten-free on it. So, you know... If people don't know, it's one thing. What really grinds my gears though is when people do know and they don't even make an effort to try to accommodate you. I've had this mainly happen with family, but there are times in other parts of my life where this happens too. People around you will know that you're gluten-free. And it, the thing is, is I say it doesn't bother me. And it doesn't bother me as much as it used to. But deep down, there is that feeling of being left out. And because so much of our social situations involve food and, you know, the socialization that occurs when you have a meal with somebody else, it, it is a big deal. It's a big thing. It's the gluten free part really gets on, on my nerves when I'm traveling. And I get the most frustrated during that. But honestly, the times when it hurts and feels the most isolating is when you are invited to an event. People know that you're gluten-free and you're not accommodated in any way whatsoever. And like I said, there is a little bit of 
I guess, asterisks here that, you know, maybe it's better to not be included so that you're not risking the cross-contamination. But, you know, often people forget how much it's the consideration that counts the most. As I dig it deeper into this shadow work and all of that, you start to dig into things that, you know, you don't think are a really big deal, but then you realize, you know what, that thing actually is kind of bothering me to a certain degree. I've been this way for 12 years now. It'll be almost, it'll be 12 years in July. And not quite as long with the full, really, really deep stuff, but because uh, my my reaction's gotten stronger over the years, actually. The longer I am not eating this stuff, the more likely it is that I have a reaction when something does happen to contaminate or all of that, which is usually where it's coming from. So it's never really or usually a really severe reaction, but I know when it happens. And so it's just something I wanted to talk about because I don't think people realize exactly how isolating it is. Like I talk about isolation with chronic illness and with, you know, not being included with your friends when you have migraines because of how many times you can't do something. But this is a like almost a hidden disability or it's not really hidden if people know, but it's a disability almost to a certain degree. And it's like you're not being accommodated for that, even if you don't have a medical diagnosis of celiac disease, which I don't actually. I did this myself. I found out myself. Uh, that's about the only thing I would change actually going back. It would be nice to be able to have that diagnosis if that's what's actually happened, which it's possible. I have psoriasis, which is an autoimmune condition, and they often do come in more than one. So it's quite possible that celiac is a thing. It's just I've never been tested. So, and to go through the testing now would be meaningless because it would be a lot of pain for a while in order for me to find out. And then to go through all of that and find out, no, you're not celiac, but you know, this was helping you feel better. So like it, it doesn't really, the harms outweigh the positives basically. Although, like I said, it would be nice because claim some expenses on taxes and have them basically medical necessity that you actually do have to do this I think being able to say celiac would be a little bit more I think maybe helpful for when talking with people about it but honestly unless there's food involved I don't even ever mention it so like if somebody doesn't know and they try to offer me something they often feel terrible and what I'm saying is don't feel terrible about it you didn't know but but if I have told you multiple times, I don't expect someone to remember after even a couple of times, but if I've continuously said, or you're continuously around me and I've said, I can't eat that, I'm gluten-free, and you still continue to offer me stuff, that's the point when I start to get a little bit frustrated because I know you're not paying attention. And it's just something I wanted to talk about, it's just something that's been on my mind and all of that because I am very, very sad sometimes about all of the restrictions that I have to put up with. It's unfortunate. It's a big part of being social is the food and all of that. And as little of it as I like being an introvert, you still want to be included in things. And it's a bonus to be included. Even just the thought of, oh, sorry, Ashley, we couldn't find anything for you that was gluten-free this time. That's fine, but don't start using that as a consistent excuse either. How would you feel if you know, you had something and couldn't participate because of something that you can't control, basically. And this is really something that you cannot control. Like, there's no cure for it. It's just you can kind of live a little bit more comfortably and less off the toilet if you are eating gluten-free. Like I said, I don't really expect accommodations. Very few people are accommodating to something like this. However, if you want to get a gold star in my books, being accommodative or accommodating to the best of your ability is a really, really decent effort. But if you guys want to hear more about what it's like being gluten-free even, I feel like I should do more videos on this because it's a really big part of my life that I don't really discuss. And, you know, I talk about IIH and migraines a lot. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching.
Feel free to subscribe, like the video. Bye everyone.